I've been thinking a lot about rules lately. Not necessarily like f-stop and shutter speed and rule of thirds and stuff like that, but that is part of it. What I mostly think about is the rules that we make for ourselves and the rules that we get taught from places like message boards or other photographers or well-meaning industry axioms, I guess. And so I asked you on YouTube and on Patreon this basic question. What kind of rules you've heard and what impact they've had on you? And so we're taking a look at your great responses right now. And then there are stupid rules. Molly has an awesome channel called Eclecticrome, which I will link in the description below. But yeah, you're not a dude. You still belong in photography. And up front, I'd like to agree with Martin that yes, there are rules that can be very good from a technical standpoint. If you learn them, you don't necessarily have to know them. They're definitely useful in commercial photography, but not all photography is commercial photography. So yeah, uh, those are types of rules that I feel like if you want to work commercially, it might be easier on you to learn them, but you know, anybody can do anything they set their mind to in a lot of cases. They can be a great foundation for beginners and they can also be intimidating. Not everyone learns in the same way, but it's a way that's worth exploring. Then there are the rules like I am thinking that we'll talk about now as we kind of look over a few shoots in which I probably break more than a few rules. While I'm doing a relatively good job of actually behaving and following rules, I thought I would add that this video is partially inspired by seeing a bunch of negative posts on the internet on places like Reddit and certain Instagram meme pages. And they go from things like just bagging endlessly on popular YouTubers, for example. But part of what they're doing is establishing a line for new photographers especially, saying that they can't cross this. And what it winds up doing is that it imbues a new photographer's practice with fear. And despite them acting like they're trying to be original and different, by attacking these established people, they're creating their own homogenized vision. But I guess I should talk about this shoot with Ashley real quick. There was no particular agenda for this shoot other than let's do something kind of a little more quote unquote urban near sunset. And the lack of a mission is something I like to force on myself sometimes because I had this period where it felt like this idea that I had to have an artist statement to work from was uh, drilled into me and it quickly became very creatively stifling. I don't think everyone who makes these rules really wants to stifle other people. I think Christian, Zach, Marina, and Molly shed a light on sometimes these are well-meaning rules or rules or guidelines suggested to get predictable results, but they are often misread and it's often a good policy to completely ignore them. But learning the guideline or rule in the first place is a good way to start to understand how to break them. By the way, Marina has a great YouTube channel you should check out. It's called Analog Diaries and it too will be linked in the description. One of the things you hear a lot is to not shoot into the sun and we're about to break that rule. But first I'm going to shoot this flash with the sun behind me as the quote unquote rule would dictate or at least not directly into the lens. But I'm using a flash here to what's called wrap around the light a bit. Just basically help add a little sunlight a little past where it naturally goes and help reduce the contrast between the highlights and shadows which is one of the reasons people say to not shoot at like harsh hours like noon and stuff like that another favorite of the rules crowd that comes from the commercial photography days especially is that you can't have lens flare or light leaks and we've seen the light leak thing completely fall apart it's become a look and that's one of the things to realize is that commercial photography pretty much belongs to digital now so film photography's vocabulary gets to expand wildly. But another way people either try to 
push people away from working or discourage them or unintentionally discourage them from working is to declare that there's only certain times of the day you can shoot like sunset or maybe night like Lucy here points out uh, check out her channel and her podcast which are linked in the description by the way but she mentioned how people say oh you can only shoot at sunset or you shouldn't shoot at midday and stuff and it becomes people it becomes discouraging to people who can only shoot at bad light I spent a lot of time chasing good light and just not being able to catch it especially if you have a job that doesn't let out until after sunset or you have a job that begins at sunset or you know so on uh, it, it becomes where you think well I just don't have any time to shoot and some people can't go out at night and shoot so you might only have noon so this is an older shoot with Kaylee where I just decided it was worth it to go out at noon and the light was super harsh, the shadows were super deep. But I tried to find ways which I could make it work. And I think I'm probably better at it now. But the 35mm I shot with a Yashica T5 I had at the time. And the 120 I shot with a Bronica. I could have brought a flash here and evened it out like I did with Ashley on the rooftop. But I found it to be more helpful to just use what I had. Helpful like my patrons listed here, you too can join for as little as a dollar a month and get access to some exclusive posts or get preference in polling and things like that and discounts on zines. So look in the description and find the link and thank you for my patrons and for your support. It really does make a difference. And speaking of making a difference, just going out and doing this for yourself, even if you blow out everything and find out that it is really hard to get good pictures at a terrible time of the day with terrible shadows, you find the few pictures that do work and then you find a way to recreate those more often and to look for things that are favorable for those conditions. Like I never would have known that the Yashka T5 maybe T4 lens also could get this really beautiful rainbow flare. To quote BMX legend Rick Thorne, you don't get good just thinking about it. You have to get out there and take photos. And even with that, sometimes the best approach is to not take photos and let your mind work it out. Which goes back to my little session earlier with Ashley, which we'll actually watch the end of. There was no particular agenda for this. It was all what I call like discovery or traditional art practice would consider it a study. And she's backlit here, which is often a no-no, but I also filled the shadows with a flash on the 120 stuff that I shot on the Hasselblad. But you'll notice the 35 millimeter isn't hooked into anything. I didn't use flash with a majority of those. I have to reiterate, I truly appreciate all the feedback I got on this and all your rules. And please pause the frames uh, that I have the responses up on because they're well worth reading and I agree with so much in all of them like the no rules concept being a double-edged sword or how silly it is that some people say you can't crop which Arnold Newman if you don't know who that is look him up he would have bristled at the idea that the film would determine the shape of his photograph and to echo Edward, please do shoot digital. You don't have to abandon either one. This is 2022 or in the future, if you watch this later, you can shoot both. So if you want to measure your flash with digital to make sure you save frames, then absolutely do that. If you just want to shoot more freely and feel a little constrained, do that. Sometimes it's better not to see what you're doing. Sometimes it's better to see it. So I think people kind of depend on digital a little too much and they get afraid of shooting film, but that's just a feel it out thing. I've learned through testing various concepts, rules, and techniques what works for me and my photography. And the best way for you to figure that out is for you to go out there and do it. Take pictures of gas stations on Cinestill at night. You might figure out something different about it. You might get the one. It's not like people invented gas station pictures for Cinestill. And on that note, film photography is different now. It's like when painting got overtaken by photography for photorealism, it found a new thing to do. These are double X, by the way, but speaking of new things to do, I tried Washi F, which is fluorographic film for the first time ever, and I am in love with the film. It's got no anti-halation coating, like Cinestill, so the highlights just flare like crazy. 
and I am so glad I got more than a few rolls of this and I will be shooting a whole lot more and as usual the Polaroid looks great but now I've got to go see a friend and uh, yeah I better be on my way Please like and subscribe, turn on notifications, leave a comment, I love talking to you. Check the description and click on these handy video links and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.